Hi everybody. Thought I'd jump on here today and uh, I want to get back into doing regular videos more often to talk to you guys. It's just that, uh, you know, because of Jake's death, there's still some stuff going on because it hasn't been that long. And I have some uh, family members where some people are falling apart and it's just uh, really hard to uh, to deal with some things right now on a daily basis because I, I feel sometimes really lost when I'm trying to pull it together. So anyway, enough about that. Uh, I want to wish you guys happy Valentine's Day. I hope you had a nice Valentine's Day. Um, Valentine's Day is for lovers, not for sons and mothers. And, you know, except for little kids, you know, you've got kids in the home. It's nice to get them a little something, show your love. But other than that, you need to do something for yourself as an adult and uh, try to get your mind in a better place. And uh, lead with your brain, not your heart. And when you start leading with your heart, like people always say, oh, I wear my heart on my sleeve and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that may be true, but... You have to, the brain has to control the heart because if your heart is controlling your emotions, your actions, your movements, and your brain, boy, you're in for a world of trouble. <laughs> your brain has to be the one to tell the heart what to do. So try to remember that. <laughs> um, okay, I want to talk about depression really quick. Um, so I want to help you guys out there if you know that uh, you could tell when um, one of your kids is something's wrong. Because see, it's one thing. Uh, when you have a, when your teenagers have a messy bedroom, they don't pick up after themselves, they don't care about nothing. Yeah, that's that's normal. But uh, what's not normal is when you notice that there's no routine at all. And of course, I blamed everything on the pandemic because the way things went down, even though in the end it wasn't the pandemic, really. It was just a depression hitting everybody. But um, the thing is, is that uh, when you notice something don't be quick to blame something like I did. Like I was blaming the pandemic. Therefore, I ignored other signs. You know, I ignored the real signs. And the signs are like, if they got a messy room, that's one thing. But if you want to talk to them and they seem to be snappy with you or they tell you they just don't care, they don't want to talk. I mean, a lot of teenagers, teenagers they don't want to talk anyway. But there's a pattern if it, if it over and over again for a certain amount of time, if they just keep being very persistent on uh, staying in their room. And my son spent his birthday, his 19th birthday in his bed and didn't seem to care. I mean, he was kind to me, whatever, but he just didn't want anything to do with me. He didn't want to be around. He didn't want to. And then I'll bring me to Thanksgiving Day, which I'll talk about in the next video. But, um, you know, those are signs when, you know, your kids don't even care to eat dinner anymore. Everything is reg irregular. Nothing is the same. Everything is um, the depression and stuff that well, you could tell. And even if it's not depression, but, but there's something weighing on your kid's mind, you'll be able to tell. And don't blame it on anything else. Use your mind to figure out what's going on. Because a messy room is one thing. Them having attitude is another. But if it keeps going... And they don't want to talk about anything because they'll be like, I don't talk to nobody and blah, blah, blah. And that's okay. But if it stays that way and, and it, they're persistent about being alone and not ever wanting to talk about anything. And next thing you know, everything's irregular. Uh, they don't care about dinner hour or anything. They just would rather eat a sandwich and in their bed or whatever, you know. Don't be quick to think it's COVID or something. You know, it's something else, you know. And uh, their mind... When a child, a teenager, anyone's alone, anyone for that matter, is alone for a certain amount of time and isolates himself, their brain as a young adult can go in crazy directions. And there's nothing you could do even as a parent to reel them in because you're probably going through stuff too and you're just blaming the pandemic on everybody's actions. But you got to be able to look deep. You got to be able to figure out, this is my child. Um... Just because there's a pandemic and uh, he's spending the day in his birthday in his bedroom, there's some. I feel like something else is wrong. If you get that feeling, then you're right. Go with your gut. You're right. Something else is wrong. Because uh, a lot of times things uh, don't last that long. You know, like if someone's depressed and yeah, I get it. Spending a, your birthday in your room because a lot of people did, you know. But there are certain other things you can pay attention to as a mom, but. At the time, you don't see it. You're too in it. You know, you're too in it. You don't see it. But uh, And then it's too late. 
So I'm just out there to warn you guys to pay attention to that. It's that's the main sign right there is is inconsistency when they now they don't want to eat dinner or they don't care. Uh, they're not uh, hungry for the same foods they used to eat and you know irritated at times and you know that's where my son's anger issues came in because um i believe that his spiritual life was fighting with his earthly life and we'll talk about that in another video so anyway i just wanted to warn you guys and talk to you guys about that how you can help your kids because then you notice if you're getting depressed too or if your your kids' actions or teenagers actions are making you feel a certain way too it's not the pandemic. There's really something else going on, you know. So, you know, I just didn't think that. I was thinking pandemic and, you know, I really didn't know exactly what was going on. But it's a warning sign, especially if you start getting depressed too over your ch children's actions. There's, you know, there's a problem. And then uh, I just don't want to talk a whole lot one video so I can maybe do more uh, daily or every other day. Um uh, like I said, if there's nothing regular, no routine, whatever. Um, I was just trying to read some stuff here because I just, I have a lot I want to talk about. I'm just trying to get through a family situation right now. So, um, plus my situation is a little bit different. I feel like God was calling my son instead of like, you know, mainly depression. Like I said, he was fighting. That's why he would punch a wall or something. His... You know, it's it's not drugs. I should have looked into it deeper. I should have known my son better than that and realized that it was a problem, you know. Not, <laughs> um, when Jake went into the academy, I feel that uh, it was, uh, God was prepping me. He was prepping me to be alone, you know, because while he was in there, I wrote him every day. And, you know, there's this, I was being prepped to be alone. It was part of the process. And we'll get into that because you'll see, you'll agree when I talk about that. And um, right before Jake died, uh, three weeks before he died, it's like he knew it was coming. First of all, he wore the same sweatshirt, his favorite sweatshirt. He wore that sweatshirt every day for three weeks. That's another sign. It's one thing to, you know, not want to change your clothes, whatever, but three weeks wearing the same sweatshirt, the same shirt, you know, was, uh, I didn't really think nothing of it and then, until, you know, it was too late. But uh, I figured he's just not going anywhere, not doing anything. He don't care to change. But, you know, that's a big sign right there. You don't wear the same shirt every single day. Even when he would leave the house, he would still go out and do something. But And he'd come back or he'd go to Taco Bell and come home or go hang out with some friends. And, you know, because even on his birthday, you could have he could have left the house and gone and done something. You know, I mean, I don't know if he got up real later, later that day when it was dark on stuff and did anything. I don't know because I was sleeping by then. But... I'm just saying, uh, so the fact remains the same. It's just, uh, you know, your you, people fight with themselves, you know, and you got to be able to acknowledge that and see that fight. But anyway, about three weeks before my son died, he was talking to me about, uh, his car loan. He owed $1,300 on the car and I told him I, he wanted to pay it off. And I said, well, don't because you've been you got that car loan a while ago, a year ago, and you're trying to build your credit because that's what I thought you wanted. And if you pay off your loan now, you won't be able to borrow on that same loan again, you know, like extend the loan if you wanted to get a different car because that was his plan. And I was trying to teach him that, you know, like it's, he, you got to make on-time payments, blah, blah, blah. And he was doing that. And all of a sudden, he just didn't care anymore. He wanted to pay the car off. He didn't care about that anything about building his credit anymore or nothing. So a few weeks before he died, he paid the car off. And the other weird thing was um, also around that same time, I got the dates written down, but I didn't bother to look at it right now. But if anybody wants to know, I'll look it up. Two to three weeks before he died, he closed his bank account and took all his money out of his savings. Um, he didn't have checking, he has savings. And I don't um, know why he did that. But he wanted to, he was he like cleaning house, you know, like he closed his bank account. He paid off his car loan. And all this was just weeks before. I mean, I got chills thinking about right now, um, the order of things that went happened in this house, the way things went down. It's uh, weird to me because like when Jake was in the academy, I remember last year, 
a friend of his, which was actually his bunkmate. His name was Alex. And uh, Alex uh, was killed in a car crash. And I remember when Jake put on his red academy uniform and all his buddies, they went to the funeral. I asked him if you wanted me to go. And he said, no, he just wants to go with his friends. And so I felt really bad for Jake because that was his bunkmate. They were in a bunk together, you know. And, uh, you know, Jake was just uh, a tizzy about it. You know, he was really upset. And he showed me a pair of socks that he had that Alex showed, showed him how to fold these socks. And he kept them in his top drawer. It was just really weird. Some of those things were were just strange to me, you know. But, uh, I mean, not strange that he's mourning and, and uh, stuff for his friend, but just some of, some of his little tiny actions that no one else would pick up on but a mother, you know. Um, so it's weird that uh, his bunkmate died just a year ago. And so um, I've actually been, uh, his mom, Alex's mom had reached out to me and uh, she's the one, she sent me a book too, and uh, this stuff. And uh, she told me that Alex actually told her, at least on three occasions, that he felt like he was going to die. And, uh, you know, Jake never mentioned that to me. I remember the, the little argument we got into the day before. I was like, you know, I wish, I'm wise. I wish you would just talk to me. Tell me what's, what's on your mind. He goes, I don't talk to anybody, blah, blah, blah. And he was really mad when I'd say, I want to talk to him because... I told my dad always told me everybody talks to somebody, at least one person. They tell him something, you know, he's like, not me. I ain't going to talk about nothing. Jake never, ever told me that he felt he was going to die. And with all these signs, I knew it. And I'll tell you the day Jake found out about when he was going to die was after the academy. And when he started getting some anger issues and uh, with weird happenings around the house, after he died, I went into his room, of course, you know, I'm looking for stuff. And uh, I kept asking him, I was like, when did you know? How did you know? How did you know? I mean, because all your actions point to you knowing you were going to die, but you never said anything. And uh, I mean, actually, I was the one thought I was going to die. And I'll tell you that story. But the thing is, is that uh, I was looking around in his room and behind up on the upper shelf of his closet in the back of some stuff, I found this. This was his Easter basket that I gave him uh, in 2020. Um, he didn't touch it. He's never touched a thing in here. Um, everything is still in here. I mean, what do you get a kid? He's a grown kid. So I just got him things that I thought he would like. And there's candy in the bottom and then a, a, like a $20 gas card. But he never ate any of it, never got anything. And so when I was asking... Like I was praying and I was saying, When did you know? When did you know? I was told to go in his room and look at that look at the closet look i mean i get guided certain places and that's really hard for me to explain to you but i'm just telling you so when i was guided in there and uh i don't know uh, all this stuff was in there i mean he never opened any who wouldn't want their jalap creamy jalapeno chips he loved hot stuff but he left it there because he was told on that easter that when he was gonna die and he didn't he didn't care he didn't want to touch anything he left this for me to it was a sign for me to find later that's how i see it but anyway that's enough for today the videos are getting longer and now they're going to get interesting and better along the way i'm just um still dealing with some stuff at the house here and uh we'll talk to you guys soon thank you so much for uh listening to me and being there for me and i don't even know what to do with my channel i mean i'm embarrassed that my channel says art and entertainment because i'm just not that person anymore I mean, I have a lot of artwork on my channel and people can reference to, but I just don't care anymore. I just don't know, you know. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys for watching and uh, paying attention to some signs of your own. I love you guys and we'll talk soon.